will begin this lecture with uh, the topic related to functions of random variables. So we looked at a single function of a single random variable, then uh, two functions of two random variables. And uh, in this connection, there is one important function, which is just sum of two random variables. So let x and y be two random variables. Then we will define a function z, okay, a random variable z, which is the sum of the random variables x and y. So it's a, just one function of two random variables, but it has certain properties, and we will quite often encounter this. That is why we are looking at this. Once we know how to characterize the sum of two random variables, sum of many random variables can be characterized and that will also be uh, quite useful. So this is what we will try to do. So here what is being given is uh, the f and x and y are two random variables, they may have some relationship. So they are specified using joint density function and joint distribution function. So what we are interested is in finding fz of z and the pdf, cdf on z. This is the one in which we are interested. So let's take a case of x and y being discrete random variables. Then z is also discrete. Has to be discrete only. Because it can only take finite number of values, finite values. So two such finite those so their combination, if you put at x plus y, they have to also be discrete only. So we are interested in PMR of z. So first we have to find the range of z. So here we are not specifying what uh, distribution x and y has. We will we'll assume it as a generic distribution and we will derive general factors. So the range of z can be found out by looking at all possible combinations of x and y x and y, x and y can be positive, negative and so on, we have to find out all possible combinations of x plus y, that will be the range of z. So for that, we are going to find the PMF, which is, of this is what we are looking at. z is equal to z, where z lies in the range of the random variable so z. Range of values that random variable z can take. So how do we find it? So, we have to sum out all possible combinations of x and y which will lead to a given value of z. So that the sum becomes equal to z. So, accordingly, we have to sum over all x and y. This I will not specify, it's over the range of x, range of y, of probability that x equal to x, y equal to y, subjected to the condition x plus y equal to z. Okay. So, this is how we can formally define uh, property that z is equal to z. So, how can we write it? First, let's say we let x to take on all possible values. Okay. And then, if you want to impose this condition, give, let it x to take a particular capital X to take a particular value small x, means y has to obey this condition, then see z is given that for a particular value you are finding. X is also if you fix a particular value, then y has to be z minus x. We don't have a uh, 
freedom of choosing any other value of y. Given a z and given an x, then it's equal to that's it. Both are equal. You have uh, two degrees of freedom, x and y both can vary, subject to this constraint. Or let one of them vary and impose the constraint by absorbing it here. So here again, this may not be required because why this is in the range of y, but y is value is here. So this is here. now you don't have any freedom of choosing whatever value of y is. So this goes away. So it becomes a single summation. This is how you can find out the PMF of Z. So to write it, yeah, this is how we have to write it. In general, if x and y are IOD random variables, then this can be split into two PMFs. And we can write it like this. And this is what we will call this, this is the, is called as the discrete convolution. Now so we can generalize this for continuous value random. Again, for this, what we will do is we will start off with the CDF of Z. That is, again, Z is equal to X plus Y. We know, not now the X, Y of X comma Y as well, okay? And this also. We will start off with asking for the form of the uh, CDF of Z. So what it means probably is that Z is less than or equal to And what is that? So this is what we want to find out. So to do that one, we can first condition on X. X taking a particular value and then what this will be. That is, if I put, sorry, from here, this one. Suppose I put a condition on X, okay, and then this becomes a conditional one. But having imposed the condition, to get this one, we have to uncondition it by multiplying fx of x into dx over the entire range of x. I will just leave it as a just a term. So what I have done is to get this one, I have to impose the condition and then again uncondition. This is what we do. So what is this one? Again, x equal to small x. x plus y is, is less than or equal to a given value z, given that x equal to x. So, which means that I can put that x here. This is here. This can be written like this. When I know that the value that random variable x can take is small x, I can incorporate by putting that value here. So what is 
in this room. Now this one, okay. Uh, Yeah, this one again I will rewrite it. Why do I have to only kill me that a baby? I'll separate minus x on both sides and I will get this one. And what is this one? What is this quantity? How, how do we uh, rename it in a notepad? Capital F Y evaluated at Z minus X. You know, that is not shocked that Y is less than or equal to something, means it is a CDF of Y evaluated at this one. So we can always write it like this one. Now, if you differentiate by z on both this one, uh, here I get z of z. But here what happens, it is the function of, if the uh, CDF of Y only, but there is a function of Z variable over which I am differentiating. Which means that uh, I have to different, this one I have to differentiate, which will give you, give me F Y of Z minus X. And then this I have to differentiate with respect to Z, which will give me 1, which I am just leaving it. So again what we are getting is dx is there. So I, if, if the integration is over the uh, dx, x domain, the in general we will put it as minus infinity to plus infinity. So what now we get is fz of z can be obtained by fx of x into fy of z minus x dx. This is convolution integral. So, to get the sum of two random variables, we have to convert the density function of the involved in random variables. Okay. This is the convolution operation, this is what you have to do. If it is discrete, it is a discrete convolution, continuous means the instead of summation we have the interval. Okay. Um, For coming to the discrete one, let's take a simple example that x is binomial n comma p, y is binomial uh, m comma p, and we will define z is equal to x plus y. How will be the nature of z? And what will be its, uh, that is, what is its PMO? What is the nature of the distribution of Z? Where we are, uh, X and Y are of course independent. Okay. How will be the uh, nature of Z? Will it be binomial? If it is so, what are the two parameters? Of course, you remember, what are these two parameters? N means you are doing N, capital N, Bernoulli, independent Bernoulli trials. But all of them have got the same probability of success, which is the speed. Now, these two are such that the number of Bernoulli trials are different. Here you do n trials, here do you do m trials. But the success probability is the same. Now I am asking z is equal to x plus 1. Then, will it be binomial? If so, how will it be? Huh? M plus Z and then 
set C. So we expect that is equal to why simply because what is this binomial mean? I toss a coin where the success, I say the coming about that, the property of success is P. Okay. I do it 10 times and find the property that there will be 7x, 6x, 3x and that is the binomial distribution of 10, out of 10 tosses, probability of success being P. Then let us say I will define 50 and I will do 15 tosses in the same probability of success. Now what does these two mean? I do 25 tosses in the same coin with same probability of success P and I ask out of 25 how many heads can come? What is the distribution? So conceptually after 10 I will say this is X. After 15 it is Y and then add up the total number of X. So it has to be binomial only and it has to be 25 P only. It's only that we conceptually divide a single bi bi binomial uh, the sequence of binomial terms into two parts. Will it happen? So in this case Z property of Z equal to is equal to sigma over uh, x. Let us say k. k trials, k varying from, x means it can vary from 1 to m. Because there are total of m trials are there. k the number of successes that denote the x can take a value 1 to uh, 0 to m into probability that x equal to k and okay instead of z because if we are talking about this k I will call it a small n that makes more sense into probability of y is equal to m minus k this is the discrete convolution that is what I am doing is probability that total number of successes is n can occur in all possible ways such that k successes occur that belong to x and n minus k successes occur that belong to y. Together the total number is n. What is this one? This is by bi binomial distribution. n k p power k the 1 minus p power n minus k. So capital N minus K. This is this one. And the next one is, now here how many are there? M. M and it is N minus K. P power N minus K into 1 minus P power M minus <coughs> so we will take this out P power K P power N minus K if you take these two things what do you get? P power n. See, I will take these two. That these two I will say as aggregate right? These two is nothing but P power n. And if I take these two things, what are all are that? Here I have got n minus k plus m minus n plus k. Okay, so what is this actually? This is uh, this is actually n plus m minus n. This is what it is. So what are we getting?
you will what we are getting indeed we can take these two things outside because this this is over k is equal to 0 to n these two things outside this summation if you look at this summation okay we will not show it it's purely a combinatorics this one this will be nothing but m plus n m plus capital n it is the same as this then what happens here is This together, sorry, this together we have so m n. Sorry, this will not come. This will go together. We will form this one. m plus n n p power n one minus p power m plus n minus. This is what we will have. It will come. Which means that this is binomial. So z is binomial with total number of tiles is capital M plus capital N. And success properties. Okay. So this is uh, what it will turn out to be. Then we will now we have seen the general sum of two random variables. For the case of discrete, we have given a formula for discrete convolution. For a case of continuous. The continuous inter convolution integral we have told that that is how we can find it. We took an example for the case of discrete random variables, sum up to this one. We will now take an example similarly for continuous random variables. And then look at how convolution integral can be done to find the uh, property density function of the sum of two random variables. Let x be uniform between minus 1 and plus 1 y is uniform between minus 1 and plus 1. Uh, I will do it there because we need more space if it will be continuous. So x is uniform minus 1 and plus 1. y is uniform minus 1 and plus 1. So z is equal to x plus y. How do we find it? Uh, characterization of z. First, what, what is your idea? What is your take? Will z be uniform? You know, it won't be uniform. The values that z can take is so this will take value value between minus one and plus one. The minus one and plus one. Z is equal to x plus y. So what are the extreme values that can be taken by that? So minus two to plus one. That is no. So let us plot uh, it to get an idea. This is what is the effects of x. Same as the f y of y out. Because they are identical. Uniform distribution between minus 1 and plus 1. And what is the height of this? Half. Ah, The width is 2, so the height has to be half. Well, now we will go ahead and then find this one. So now to represent x and y, which is a function of this one, for convenience we will define a function rect, okay, for x by d. This is a rectangular function centered around x of width d. That is what it means. 
the rectangular function centered at x so the width d is what we are going to represent as this so how does it look like that uh, this function wherever that x is so it has to be rectangular the width is d symmetrical which means that this is minus d which this has to be x minus d by 2 this is x plus d by 2 Okay, so with this, how can we represent the f x of x? It is also equal to f y of y in terms of the rect function. This is centered around zero. The f x of x by definition, uniform between minus one and plus one means it is centered around zero. So with this one, yeah, r zero, but I. Uh, not f x of x, we may also deal with some other thing. Uh, okay, we will uh, write about this itself, okay. uh, which is of this form. Again, there is an alternate way in which you can mention this form this kind of a rectangular function. Suppose I will define a function which is a unit step function which starts at one point at x minus d by two. And another unit step function which is at x plus d by two. So what is the unit step function? is 0 for x greater than 0, sorry, 1 for x greater than 0, 0 for x less than 0. So, unit step function is 1, at 0 it becomes 1. At uh, uh, this one. So, we can accordingly change it. So, this is, at, I want it at, when this argument becomes 0, then it changes. For all positive values, if the argument is positive, it is 1. If it is negative, it is 0. That's what the unit step function is. So, accordingly, I can write this as u of uh, x plus b by 2. If I, mean, if I put like this, it means that this is a unit step which changes from 0 to 1, then the argument becomes 0, which means that when x equal to minus d by 2, when x equal to x becomes minus d by 2, it changes. And I want only this point. So from this, when, when it becomes plus d by 2, I mean, it should become 0. So I will subtract. I will take this unit step function and subtract this unit step function, then I will get this rectangle. You can write it like this. See, you look at this d by 2 minus d by 2, then it becomes 0, that is then it changes. So I am taking something which is goes like this, from that I am subtracting. This function is I am going to invert it and then subtract it then I would get this. So this is how we can write it. So uh, Z of Z can be written as from the convolution formula integral minus infinity to plus infinity f x of x into f y of z minus x d f. Well, now what happens? This can be written as a rectangular function. Okay. Uh, 
x by d. What is the height? Height is 1 by 2. This is also 1 by 2. This is the fx of x. It goes like that. Of course, the integral effective will change into minus 2 to plus 2 only. But now, in, you, you do know this when this function screen cat facing this, we can find it out easily using a graphical illustration. See, what we are doing here is fx of x, this is 0, this is minus 1, this is plus 1. So this one. Now z is a, z can take value minus 2 to plus 2 also. Okay. So this Accordingly, this is a one which will, this will also be a rectangular one. Based on z value, the center will be decided. And we have to multiply two of this and then taking into it. So that is, you have one rectangle, we have another rectangle. And then you are going to multiply this one at every point. Point by point, the value of this and value of this and then you are going to do that one. And whereas this value can be a rectangle like this, I will put it like this. Or it can be something like this. Or it can be like this. Or it can be anywhere it can be. It may be moving one based on that. Whereas this is fixed one. And we have to multiply it. So this two of them, this takes value like one in this interval and zero otherwise. This also takes value like one in this interval, this one, and zero otherwise and so on. When you multiply it, only if there is an overlap, they will take a non-zero value. If they don't overlap, they will take zero value. Okay? So, then under what condition they can overlap? Z can take, if you take the value minus 2, then what will happen is, it will be something like this. If it is centered at minus 2, then its extreme will be at minus 1 and this will be minus 3 and there won't be any overlap, just touching. And if it moves like this, then what can happen is, if it moves something somewhere here and just, it can be like this, then this will be an overlap. We have to integrate it over this. And as it moves, then what will happen is more and more overlap will come. And if it is also centered at zero, exact both of them will completely overlap. And then if it moves like that, I will show one snapshot of that also. This is fx of x. The other one can be like this. Then also there will be overlap. So this overlap comes here and then at one point when both are zero, it's at, at less than minus two no overlap. And then as we move like this one, at zero there is still overlap as we go here, lesser and lesser overlap. Again when the center of this one becomes plus two, then this will be like this. Overlap stops. This is how it is. So, how we can so f z of z is equal to zero for z less than or equal to minus it's also zero for z greater than or equal to plus this is clear. Before that only you have to see. So for that what we can do is, see if it overlaps like this one, this is the value z, I will put the value z. This is z plus 1, 
this is their final form. Okay. When it comes here, when there is an overlap, wherever this Z is, this is Z plus 1 and this is minus 1. This is a case where there is an overlap. This happens when Z lies between minus 2 to 0. Okay. So, for Z between minus 2 to 0, the to find this overlapping region, what you have to do is, we have to integrate from this point to this point. What is that point? This is from minus 1 to z plus 1 into this is what we have to find. But what is this? The height is always 1 by 2 into 1 by 2. It is 1 by 4. Okay. That is the height. And this is the dx. Because x is not with respect to x only we are doing. So this is what you have, this is what you would get for this case. That will be this case. And if you if z is centered at this point, this is z plus 1 and this is z minus 1. And the overlapping region is from z minus 1 to plus 1. So with this we get the entire formula for Z of Z. And then This is what the entire formula is. So how do we, if you plot it, how do we get it? Here it says we can do it. See, here it is 0. And if you look at this one, it is uh, linear, z plus 2 by 4, this one. At minus 2, it is 0. When z equal to minus 2, it is 0. And when z is equal to 0, it is 1 half. So it is a line starting like this and reaching a value of half. And it is increasing. Okay, because z is positive. As z decreases, the value increases. If you look at this one, again at 0, if both are 1, let's see, both are at 0 point. These two are 0 point. Both, uh, both formulas are applicable. At the 0, it is 2 by 4, that is 1 by 2. And then this is a decreasing function because 2 minus z is there. And uh, at plus 2, 2 minus 2 by 4, it is 0. So it decreases and becomes like this. Okay. So this is how the uh, fz of z will look like. So the, if you, I think you will later on read in a course on signals and systems and other things. 
are solving one of one. You have two rectangular functions which are being convolved, you will get this shape of this uh, triangular one. And again, this is a PDF, it will not get normal. You see that one by half, this is a triangle, half into height, into width is 2, width is 4, 2 minus 2 to plus 2, so it becomes 1. Then what we will do is, we have looked at the sum of two random variables. Now, we will look at the difference of two random variables. For that, we will just say, x is exponential with the parameter lambda, y is also exponential with the same parameter lambda. Then z it is x minus y. Okay, how will it look like? Then we will just use the standard formula yes, z of z is equal to integral for the x domain. x always, x is exponential. Therefore, it is a, so it's a non negative uh, continuous value random variable. So, it is always from 0 to infinity. We will change, I think we have to be careful in changing the limit later also. Then fx of x into fy, fy of z minus x dx will be convolution integral for finding, sorry, uh, yeah, we have to do that. Right? But this is not applicable. It is only for sum of two random variables the convolution is applicable. But I have got x minus y. What I will treat it as x plus of minus y. I have two random variables, one is x and this is minus y. They are being added. I can convert, convert. But now here it has to be minus y, not plus y. We don't even know it yet. We know fy of y, we have to find f minus y. If y is a random variable whose characteristics is given, how will be the characterization of the negative of the random variable? Okay? So that is okay. Easily we can find f minus y of y is equal to f y of minus y. It should be obvious. Okay? That is, when this random variable you are asking at a negative value, okay, you have to evaluate this value at minus negative of this one. That will give you this. Because the interpretation of y and minus y is whenever y is some plus 2, this becomes minus 2. So, if I find the minus 2 value of this one, that will be the uh, value of minus y at 2. So, that, they are, that, that we can do it. So, Like that we can do. Now, look at this one. Uh, f minus y of z minus x. Um, okay, we will do it before or... Here, what does this tell? This has to be f. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Now, we will look at, initially we are integrating over the domain of x. But if you look at this one, fx and fy, both are exponentially random. What is this one? What is the fx of x? This will be exponential. Now, fy is also exponential, same lambda. This is how it will look like. So, they are non negative value. The density function exists only on the positive side not on the negative side, which means that this, if it is negative, immediately this becomes zero. It can be, it has to be positive, then only it is non-zero. So, which means that x minus z has to be positive, x has to be greater than z. Okay? x has to be greater than z, which means that given a z, the integral should be done above z only. For only values of x greater than z only, you have to do integration. 
So it is Z to infinity you can put safely because from 0 to Z this will be 0, the function itself will be 0, if you integrate it, it will become 0, so we can change this one. Of, uh, f y of z x minus z. It is again lambda e power of minus lambda into in place of this I have to put x minus z. e power of into e power of minus 2 We have only got our values of z which is positive. We have to now look for z can take also negative value. Because see these are exponential. It can even thousand, one lakh, one, you know, whatever value x can take. We have a probability for that. Y can also take a value. So this can x minus y can also be negative. So that is what we have to find out. Z of minus z, we have to find. If I want to find I, I y of z of z, this is true for z greater than zero. This is true for z greater than zero because these are applicable only for this formula. What I am putting are applicable for z greater than zero. So we have only found out for this. For z less than zero, we have to find it. If z of minus z can be written as f minus z of z. Already seen this one. That can be written as f of minus of x minus y of z. Z is what? x minus y. Which I can also write it as f of y minus x of z. Y minus x of 
But what we are telling is f z of minus z is f y minus z. Okay. We have so far found out the positive side characterization of x minus y. Now another random variable y minus x if it is there, its characterization if we know at z if you find it you will get this. But what is this? Do you know this? We found out for x minus y. We are now asking for y minus x. Where x and y are both identical exponentially distributed with the same parameter lambda. Which means by symmetry, x minus y and y minus x are the same distribution. It cannot be different. Because see, both are exponential, both are having the same parameter lambda. Whether you treat x minus y or y minus x, it is they are the same kind. So this is also, I can also put it as f x minus y because the characterization is same of z. So which means that this is minus z value whatever it takes. This is z only. This is z only. So f z of z. So f z of minus z is f z of z. Which means that it is symmetrical. It is an even function. That's what it does. And how does it look like? It looks like lambda by 2 and e power of minus lambda. So if you plot it, okay, it's at z is equal to 0, this is z. At 0, it is lambda by 2. And it falls like this. On positive z. And negative also it is symmetrical. There also it will fall like this. This would be f z of z, where z is x minus y. So if x and y are two exponentially distributed random variables, that difference has a random variable whose PDF looks like this. It is symmetrical, uh, exponentially decaying on both sides. And this random variable is called, it's a very important one, so Laplace random variable. Okay, so we'll start at this point. 